Medieval was developed by Other Ocean Emeryville and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment and was released on the PlayStation 4 on October 25, 2019. This is a remake of the original Medieval game released on the PlayStation 1 back in 1998. I remember playing this game for the first time on a demo disc at a friend's house back in 1998, so playing through this again definitely brought back some good memories. So, how did the remake turn out? Let's dive in and find out. In Medieval, the player takes control of the newly resurrected Sir Daniel Fortescue, who has been brought back to life by the powers of a sorcerer named Zarok, who has raised all of the dead through the land of Galamir, and it's up to Sir Dan to stop Zarok once and for all. This is a redemption tale because a lot of people were told throughout Galamir that Sir Dan had stopped Zarok and his army a hundred years earlier, but in reality, Dan was actually killed at the beginning of the battle by taking an arrow to the eye. So this is his chance to become a true hero and save Galamir and its people. Medieval begins in Dan's Crypt where all of the basics of the game are explained. There are some books scattered throughout the journey that will give tips as well as lore that will be really useful in helping Dan figure things out. While in the crypt, he acquires a rather dull sword, a weak shield, some coins, a health vial, and some throwing daggers. It's not much, but it's a start. Dan's weapons are broken up into two categories, melee and ranged. A primary and secondary weapon can be selected in the inventory menu, and these weapons can be switched between with a simple button press. The melee weapons come in the flavor of Dan's arm, swords, a hammer, a club, and an axe. Ranged weapons are throwing daggers, a crossbow, spears, a chicken drumstick, a longbow, and even lightning. The only way to obtain a lot of these powerful weapons is to kill enemies in the stages that have souls, so their souls will then fill a chalice. Once the chalice is full of souls, it can be collected before exiting the stage. Sometimes these are in plain sight, but a lot of times they're hidden away. These chalices are very important in order to get the true ending of the game, as well as have Dan deal more damage by getting better weapons. If Dan has a chalice at the end of the stage, he is automatically teleported to the Hall of Heroes, where he can pay tribute to the heroes of the past and they will reward him with new weapons. Another thing that needs to be picked up around the stages are life bottles. These act sort of like lives in Medieval, and so when Dan's health bar runs out, a life bottle is used, and he can keep going until they are all empty and then it's game over. Finding as many of these as possible will make some of the later stages less frustrating, because without them this game can kinda grind the gears, and I'll get into that later. There are also gargoyles on certain walls that can be talked to. Some of them tell just a little bit of story or info about the land, and others act like merchants for the ability to purchase items. Here Dan can buy things like ammo for his ranged weapons, or do refills on abilities of certain weapons found later in the game. The stages are laid out on a world map, and after some stages, the player will have the option to go in a few directions and play whichever levels they want that are currently available. The stages aren't just combat, some of them have puzzles that need to be solved in order to progress, and most of them have runes that need to be found in order to open doors. For the most part, I actually like the design of this game, because everything looks like it could have been straight out of a Tim Burton film. As far as the level designs, I like them for the most part, but one thing that can be super frustrating is platforming. There's one stage in particular where the player has to go through an area filled with water, and has only little patches of land to maneuver on, and since Dan is wearing almost a full suit of armor, swimming is definitely out of the question. So there are a good deal of jumps that need to be made from one patch of land to another, and one or two of these jumps in particular were a giant pain in the ass. If I missed too many times, I had to start the entire stage over again. That's right, this game is done in the style of the old one, where there are no checkpoints, and how much life you ended the last stage with is how much you start the next stage with. Thankfully, there are fountains found in the stages that can fill a few of Dan's life bottles back up, and also health vials that can be found to refill some health too. But another issue I ran into is where one of the stages Dan has to rescue little fairies in order to get the chalice, and he also has to gather some pieces of amber as a quest to help out a witch. I did both of these things, but when I finished the stage, the game decided to go crazy and play both the cutscenes with the fairies talking to me and the witch talking to me at the same time. On top of that happening, as a result it didn't give me the chalice. So instead of taking me to the Hall of Heroes, it teleported me back to the start of the world map. So I had to do the stage all over again in order to obtain the chalice. Enemies have a nice variety throughout the game and each stage seems to have different enemies than what you saw before, so the game doesn't really ever feel stale in the bad guy department. There are also bosses in the game, and most of them are a mixture of combat with a little bit of puzzle thrown in. 
Even though some of the enemies and bosses can be a bit of a pain, I really like the variety, and they all fit the stages that they were in really well. I must also warn that the combat in the game feels very much like a 20-something year old game. The auto-aim for ranged enemies don't always hit the intended targets, and melee attacks are just swinging wildly at enemies until they die. So just don't go into the game expecting the combat to be any different than it was before. The graphics in Medieval are a mixed bag, sadly. For the most part, I really like the new updated character models, but sometimes things tend to look a little odd, like they were just a bit rushed. I only say this because I mentally stack this game up to other remakes made recently, like the Crash Bandicoot and Spyro trilogies. This game doesn't really have the same amount of polish that those remakes do. Now don't get me wrong, for the most part it still looks good, but there are some rough patches here and there. For instance, the frame rate is nowhere near as smooth as it should be. There are just some places where it absolutely chugs. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. Most of the time it just had minor dips, but I think they could have ironed this out a bit more. Another issue I had was with the camera. I'm glad that they added the ability to rotate the camera instead of leaving it like the original game, but even with the extra control, the camera can still do some funky stuff in more closed-in areas where you just can't control it. It's like as Dan is moving through the tunnel that it's bouncing against the ceiling the whole time. So sometimes the camera works fine, but not all of the time. The sounds in the game are like a blast from the past. They actually use the same audio in terms of the voice work and the sounds, and this time they were uncompressed and sound nice and clear. I also like the music they did for this. The orchestral music sounds fantastic, and the music really fits the mood of the game. So, do I recommend Medieval? Well, yes and no. If you're a fan of the original, then this might give you about six or seven solid hours of fun reliving part of your past. And even though it does have some rough edges for sure, I did feel like the game had some improvements over the original here and there. Also, the original can be unlocked in this game, which is a pretty cool addition. If you weren't a big fan of the original, however, you aren't really going to have any more fun with this one. It's pretty much the same game with a new coat of paint. And if you're new to this series entirely and are curious about it, I say download the demo and see what you think. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more reviews like this, be sure and hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. And have a happy Halloween.